All right, you guys, we're going to do Chapter 8, Nutrition and Hydration. As you well know, we all have to have our nutrition. We know a lot about these foods, even though we do not choose the correct foods. We try our best. Um, this chapter should not be so hard for you. Um, we're going to go through it, though, and um, go through Nutrition and Hydration, Chapter 8. This is on page 203. Proper nutrition is very important. Nutrition is how the body uses food to maintain health. Bodies need a well-balanced diet with nutrients and plenty of fluids. A lot of times they don't stress enough fluids, but we need our fluids to live. This helps the body grow new cells, maintain normal body function, and have energy. A well-balanced diet helps maintain muscle and skin tissues and prevent pressure ulcers. Underline that. That's what we're dealing with. We want to help maintain muscle and skin tissues and prevent pressure ulcers. Got to know what a nutrient is. It's a substance that is necessary for growth in life. Nutrients provide energy, promote growth and health, and help regulate me metabolism. Also know that metabolism is the process by which nutrients are broken down to be used by the body for energy and other needs. So our first most important nutrient is water. Water is the most essential nutrient for life. Underline one half to two thirds of the body's weight is water. How many ounces of water do we need daily? It's the magic number 64. Do not forget that. It might possibly be on your test. We need eight eight ounce glasses of water, which is 64 ounces. Without it, a person can only live a few days. Um, water assists in digestion, uh, absorption of foods. It also helps with waste elimination. We use water in everything that we do during the day. Um, also through perspiration, water also helps maintain normal body temperature. Keeping enough fluid in the body is necessary for good health. The fluids a person drinks, such as water, juice, soda, coffee, tea, and milk, also provide water that the body uses. Also, some foods with water in it is soup, celery, lettuce, and apples. Then we come to carbohydrates. There are two different kinds of carbohydrates. <coughs> There's complex carbohydrates and simple carbohydrates. What they do is provide energy and extra protein. Underline that. So carbohydrates can provide energy and extra protein. They help the body use fat efficiently. Carbohydrates also provide fiber, which is necessary for bowel elimination. There are two kinds of carbohydrates. You have your complex carbohydrates that are in your bread, cereals, pasta, rice, vegetables, and fruits. All of that. They call it complex because it's not sugar yet. It has to be broken down and to make sugar, but it's going to make sugar and different things. So complex carbohydrates are better and more nutrient than your simple carbohydrates, which are sugars. That's your sweet syrup, jellies, sugary stuff that you know is sugar. That is your simple carbohydrates. Then we have protein. Uh, proteins are part of every body cell, so we need it, especially for underlying tissue growth and repair. Proteins also supply energy for the body. Excess proteins are excreted by the kidneys and stores body fats. We can get proteins from seafood, poultry, meat, eggs, milk, cheese, nuts, nut butters, peas, beans, legumes, and soy products. Whole grain cereals, pastas, rice, and breads contain some proteins too, as we mentioned earlier. Fats is also an essential. Fat helps the body store energy. In addition, fats add flavor to our food. We have to watch that flavor, though. Fats also help the body absorb certain vitamins. Some vitamins only work with fat. They have fat-soluble vitamins and water-soluble. Excess fat in the diet is stored as fat in the body. So that's how we get our weight a lot of times. We've got two different kinds of um, vegetable of fats. Um, some examples of fats, though, are butter, margarine, salad, dressings, oils, and animal fats. So you've got your unsaturated fats and your saturated. The best that you can get is your monounsaturated. That's, that's your mono. That means it doesn't have to be broken down so much and it's easily used. Uh, it includes that olive oil and canola oil. They really prefer you to use those. And polyunsaturated means they've got more chains to be broken down. Polyunsaturated vegetable fats include corn and safflower oils. Those saturated fats are just what that means. They are saturated with fats. Those are the ones that are actually more solid at room temperature, such as butter, lard, bacon, and other fatty meats. Um, they're not healthy, um, so we got to limit those. Okay, we got to do that. 
vitamins vitamins are substances needed by the body to function we've got vitamin a d e and k those are them that we're talking about the fat soluble vitamins your body holds on to them a little longer than they do the vitamins b and c which are water soluble vitamins try to remember a d e and k is your fat soluble b and c are water soluble so those are the vitamins that we need to eat on a daily basis because um they excrete out your body at a daily basis by your urine and your feces minerals maintain body functions minerals help build bones make hormones and help blood formation they provide energy control body processes very important uh, zinc iron calcium magnesium are examples minerals are found in many foods a lot of times as long as you're eating a healthy diet you'll get your minerals most foods have several nutrients so you can get a well-balanced diet if you eat balanced in 2011 they developed the my plate and that's what it is now um, it used to be a triangle now it is a my plate and if you just look if, if you really 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 just want to make a healthy diet if you take it in force as you can see vegetables and grains are a little bit bigger than proteins and fruits but put it in that category as as almost one-fourth and you will have your balanced meal and do that for your patients too you may have to cook for patients at home make sure you're giving them a balanced meal um, make sure that um, also that you have a dairy product um, it's on the side but we need that dairy product also vegetables and fruits a person should make half his plate fruits and vegetables as you see on the my plate it's at least half one fourth of each vegetables include fresh frozen canned and dried vegetables and vegetable juices there are five subgroups in the vegetable group you've got dark green vegetables red orange vegetables dry beans starchy vegetables and other vegetables all the time vegetables are to be eaten on a very every daily basis dark green red and orange vegetables have the best nutritional contact the darker they are most of the time more nutrition vegetables are low in fat and calories and have some uh, no cholesterol although we mess it up adding sauces and seasoning um, normally they are the best um, choice you can make in eating they're good sources of dietary fiber such as and pat potassium vitamin a e and vitamin c vegetables are great fruits are also included in your vegetable and fruit category fruits include fresh frozen canned and dried fruits and fruit juices most will be whole cut up or puree rather than juice um, for the additional dietary fiber a lot of times they will leave the um, the extra stuff in there um, you need not to waste all the orange you know just don't squish all the orange juice out of the orange eat the orange too because that's your fiber that you need fruits like vegetables are naturally low in fat sodium and calories and have no cholesterol what well, just is what we need they're important sources of dietary fiber and nutrients such as folic acid potassium and vitamin c underline them folic acid potassium and vitamin c for your vegetables or i should say for your fruit sorry grains underline this a person should make half his grains intake whole grains so half of your grains that you eat needs to be whole there are many different kind of grains we've got wheat rice oats cornmeal and barley foods made from grains include bread pasta oatmeal breakfast cereals tortillas and grits all of that is your grains there's two groups of grains however you've got your whole grains and your refried grains whole grains contain bran and germ as well as the endosperm which is crazy sounding but that is what we need that is the best to have refined grains retain only the endosperm they have went through a process and they have messed them up is what they've done and those are what we don't need to eat on a daily basis the endosperm is the tissue within flowering plants it surrounds and nourishes the plant embryo um, we need those both of those but in a whole grain they also have bran and germ examples of whole grains include brown rice wild rice bulgar whole grain corn whole oats whole wheat whole rye if it's whole in front of it, it should be whole and that's the best choice to make especially it makes for a good heart healthy meal protein my plate guidelines emphasize the importance of eating a variety of protein foods every week we eat meat poultry seafood and eggs those are your animal sources beans peas soy products nuts and seeds are plant sources of proteins so if you're a vegetarian um you will make sure that you're still eat, getting your proteins by eating beans peas soy nuts seeds um instead of those meats 
Seafood should be eaten twice a week in the place of meat or poultry. Seafood that is higher in oils or low in mercury, mercury should, such as salmon or trout, is a better choice. We don't need mercury in our diet. Lean meats and poultry, as well as eggs and egg whites, can be eaten on a regular, poultry, um, regular basis. A person should eat plant-based protein foods more often. So being a vegetarian is great. Um, if you're not, still um, plant-based proteins, if you can add that into your diet, would be wonderful. Beans and peas, soy products, nuts and seeds are lower in saturated fat and high in fiber. So that's also good choices. Some nuts and seeds, such as flax and walnuts, nuts, are excellent sources of essential fatty acids. And you can underline that. Some nuts and seeds are excellent sources of essential fatty acids, what we need. Um, fatty acids reduce the risk of heart disease. So we need those things. So eat you some flax and walnuts because those are essential fatty acids that we need. Sunflower seeds are also good sources of vitamin E. Dairy, all milk products and foods made from milk that retain their calcium content is a dairy. That is yogurt, cheese. They are part of your dairy category. Most dairy groups, the best choices to make is fat free or low fat. Um, they should be chosen more often than cheese. Milk and yogurt contain less sodium. Also, cheese contains a lot of sodium. Milk provides nutrients that are vital for health and the maintenance of the body. They include calcium, potassium, vitamin D, and protein. We all need that. Fat-free or low-fat milk provides these nutrients without the extra calories. So fat-free, low-fat, that's what we're choosing, 1%. Um, that's I think WIC has even changed to that um, for the children. Healthy food choices. We know to balance our calories. You eat more than you use, then you get fat. Um, I love food, and I know to exercise, and I know I can tell you to exercise, and I know you, um, I can tell you not to eat as much, um, but that is my advice. Enjoy your food, but eat less. Avoid oversized portions. Don't get too fat, and I don't mean fat. Don't get too full, um, where you, you just can't barely breathe and can't move. That makes you sit on the sofa some more, and then that just makes you some more fat. And I'm talking, and I know what you're thinking, but this is um, advice. <laughs> eat these foods more often. Eat your vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and fat-free or 1% milk. Those are the things you should be eating. Eat less foods that are high um, in solid fats, especially um, any added sugars, any salt. Stay away from those. What they, I'm a, on all of my tests, my LPN, RN tests, both have told me not, um, they've had questions such as what to avoid on your plate. And a lot of times they will have choices like hot dogs. And you know to avoid that. That's processed and it's got a lot of uh, salt in it. Bacon, it's processed. It's got salt and a lot of fat in it. Um, so you try to not choose things like that. Cheese is not a good thing. Even though it has some dairy content, it's got a lot of salt in it too, a lot of fats. Uh, fried foods, ice cream, cookies, they're just not good and healthy choices. Compare sodium in your foods. Read product labels. Um, you're very interested in this because of hypertension. You do not want to give people um, with hypertension these type of um, foods, which is cured meats, including ham, bacon, lunch meat, and sausage, because they are cured and processed and they stay good through the use of salt. It is a preservative, so we do not want to um, give them that. Salty smoked fish, including herring, sardines, anchovies, smoked salmon, all have and preserved in salt. Processed cheese and some other cheeses. Salted foods, including nuts, pretzels, potato chips, and dips. You see the salt there, so you know that's not good. Vegetables preserved in some kind of brine, such as pickles, sauerkraut, and olives. Brine is salt and water. Maybe salt and uh, some or other ingredients, but it is salt. Um, sauces with high con concentration of salt, such as steak and soy sauces, ketchup, mayonnaise. A lot of people don't realize how much salt is actually in there. Um, commercially prepared foods, such as breads, canned soups, vegetables, and certain breakfast cereals also have too much salt in them. Especially canned soups. Now, that was on my RN test. Um, I have a patient um, that was hypertension. What not to include on their tray? And you would think soup is a good thing, but they say canned soup. Canned soup is, again, preserved with salt. Just look on the back, and you will see salt, 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 salt. And sometimes it's like number one or two ingredient, and, and you're trying to eat a soup, but the salt is number one, two, maybe three. But that is not a good choice. Make sure if you are eating canned foods that they're labeled sodium-free, very low sodium, 
or reduce sodium. Um, try to choose um, if you can. Drink water instead of sugary drinks. Water, water, water. Um, drinking water or unsweetened beverages reduces sugar and calorie intake. So instead of eating everything, you're drinking it. So And it takes place of uh, having an empty stomach, so you drink your water, and it counteracts you trying to eat everything else. Um, describe factors that influence food choices. We know that culture, ethnicity, income, education, religion, geography, all affects the choices that people make. It affects what the children are grew up on, um, what they ate, um, what your mama ate, cooked way back in the days. Maybe she was a country girl. Um, just make sure that um, we are watching what we eat, no matter what. Um, just like your region or culture you grew up in may affect your food choices. Ethnic group may also share common foods that they eat. Um, just like people from southwestern United States like spicy food, southern cooking is fried foods like fried chicken, fried okra. Um, religious beliefs also. Try to look up some uh, religious beliefs and what they don't eat. So, um, number one here is Muslim and Jewish. They don't eat pork. A lot of people just know about Muslim not eating pork, but so does Jewish not eat pork. And for the same reasons um, that the Muslim don't. Uh, Mormons may not drink alcohol, coffee, or tea. They don't want to drink or eat anything that will alter their normal state of being. And um, alcohol, coffee, tea, caffeine stuff is altering. No caffeine either. Food preferences may change while the resident is living at the facility. Sometimes they may love spaghetti, but you don't feed the spaghetti to them three times a day for, or however. If that's the only thing they'll eat, maybe they get tired of eating it. Sometimes, you know, you do. It's something that's favorite and you just eat it all the time, you get tired of it. Just like Thanksgiving and turkey and dressing. You know, after a while, you, you're good. But um, doesn't mean that it don't come back where you want it again. Food choices. Know that they have a choice to um, choose their foods. If they don't like the first choice, maybe most um, facilities will have a second choice, maybe even a third choice. Two hot food choices and then one third. Um, we have to honor those. Um, if they want to eat their uh, dessert first, let them eat their dessert first. As long as you know they're going to eat their food. Um, maybe they want a kosher diet um, because uh, that's what they eat. So try your best to go find out what a kosher diet is. Um, and also because they, in the blue box, that is about your rights. Everything in the blue boxes are your patient rights. Um, the resident may say he's Jewish and cannot eat pork because it is not kosher. So you need to respond with another tray or another alternative to that tray. Explain special diets. Anything that is not regular, which is not, uh, regular is just uh, the regular diet. But if it's any way different, even if they're allergic to uh, bananas, um, that still makes that diet special. It's something you got to note, you got to look at before you hand this tray over. You got to make sure they don't have bananas on it. If it's a regular tray, then you can have it. If they're not allergic to anything, there you go. But if it's a special diet, you're going to have to look at that tray and make sure that's the correct one. So identify your patient and that it has got what it should have on it. They may call it therapeutic, modified, but some kind of way it's special. Certain nutrients or fluids may need to be restricted or removed. Sometimes they're allergic to whatever, but make sure that's not on their tray. Um, diets are also used for weight control and food allergies, but those are special diets. Several types of modified diets are available. Um, one that we see a lot is low fat. That's for the pe people with bad cholesterol or heart damage. Um, we don't want to damage it even more, so we have low cholesterol for them. Uh, low sodium is very, very popular. Um, anything going on with your heart or blood pressure issues, kidney problems, we're going to have some low sodium diet. Um, uh, you can see it. It'll say low NA. NA is the chemical form of a salt. So low sodium or low NA or no added salt, NA is. They may use that abbreviation, but make sure there's no salty stuff on their tray. Fluid restricted diet are used for heart disease and kidney disease. Um, you don't want to give them too much fluids for some reason. Um, fluid taken into the body through fluid, food and fluids must equal the fluid that leaves the body in the stool, in the urine or expir expiration. This is a fluid balance. So we already know that water should be balanced coming in 
and coming out. Everything comes in, you should have an equal amount coming out. So when your kidney is damaged, when your heart is damaged, um, they have trouble processing fluids. Um, a lot of times they don't get removed and they stay in the body, and which is not good. That's why they have dialysis for your kidney patients. Um, they'll give them water pills for your heart patients. But make sure you're looking. Make sure you count um, fluids such as ice cream, puddings, gelatin. They should not be offered if they're on a fluid restriction diet because that turns into fluids. If you set it at a normal temperature and it melts, that's a fluid. Um, Sometimes you have a diet called RF, which means restrict fluids. A low protein diet is just that. They're going to have low meats, uh, low proteins, and most of the time that's your kidney disease, um, especially your end stage renal. That is um, part of it. Um, they would rather you um, encourage vegetables and starches, breads, pastas, something like that, but low protein because co protein is hard to ex excrete out of your kidneys. If you have kidney issues, then that will just mess up your blood. Low fat, low cholesterol. Those are the people with cholesterol. Sometimes they've had a heart attack, heart disease, gallbladder, because the gallbladder breaks down fat. So we will not um, try to give you any extra fat to break down if your gallbladder is messed up or missing. Um, and your liver does also that. Um, if there's something wrong with that, low fat, low cholesterol diet is coming your way. This diet, but if it's low fat, and low cholesterol, you can have low fat cheese, fish, white meat of the turkey and the chicken, fresh fruits, vegetables, you're not going to starve. You just got to eat healthier. Try to use olive and canola oils. Um, just know that um, if they do have a gallbladder problem, a lot of times they will put them on no fat whatsoever because uh, the fat that they get will cause them um, to be sick and hurt. Modified calorie diet, sometimes it's added calories, sometimes it's less than calories. Um, they're trying to get away with the less than calories if you got a short stay in the hospital because they're like, well, you know, we're not going to make them lose weight. They wasn't trying to lose weight when they came in. Um, and a lot of people stay maybe up to a week and, you know, the hospital used to say we're not going to try to add any weight to them, but you're not really going to add anything in a, a week and you're not going to fix their diet in a week. Um, so they went back to uh, mostly regular diets unless you're malnutrition and they're going to put extra food on your plate uh, after surgery sometimes you're going to eat special things to help healing um it may be low calorie or high calorie diet a diabetic diet we've also already learned about carbohydrates carbohydrates break down into sugar so everything that you eat as a carbohydrate is going to turn into sugar and you have to remember that um, we try to regulate your carbohydrates on a diabetic diet, also your protein, fats, all of that. You need to make a balanced meal. Um, some people are carbohydrate counting, and a lot of diabetics have to do that. They, they know they're about to eat that potato, they count that potato, and, and they figure out how much insulin they may need. Um, and children do that a lot. They'll, they know what they're going about to eat, and they will, they've got a programmed insulin pump that goes right straight into their bloodstream. And they'll say, okay, that potato is about eight units worth of insulin, or how many carbohydrates, and then they figure it out, and they pump it. So then they eat, and they keep their red, uh, blood sugars on a, a, a wonderful level. And they're so people, I just admire that because I was not taught that. Um, to keep blood glucose levels near normal, diabetic residents must re eat the right amount of the right type of food at the right time. So they want to keep them consistent. You don't want to mess them up because they're going to be taking insulin along with that. They need the right amount of the right type at the right time. Also, also we have those vegetarian people. Um, those are, depends on what kind of vegetarian they are. A lot of people don't understand they are different types. Most vegetarians, you would think they don't eat animal products. But, or they only eat fruits and vegetables. But um, there's different types of uh, vegetarians. Lacto, ovo, vegetarian. Remember what lacto means milk. So if you're lactose intolerant, you're milk intolerant. So just put that in there. Lacto meaning milk, ovo, just like your ovum, which is your egg that is produced when you are um, ovulating. So that's your egg. So lacto ovo vegetarian. That means that they can drink milk and eat eggs along with their vegetables. Most people will say they're vegetarian so they don't want to have nothing from an animal. That's a true vegan. Then there's different levels. You can be lacto vegetarian. That means you eat milk, 
or drink milk and eat vegetables so you're not eating anything else um, ovo vegetarian you'll eat eggs and vegetables and it really depends on um, what you're eating but a vegan will eat nothing made from an animal not your milk that comes from the cow or your eggs that come from the chicken they even cut that out um, some vegetarians just cut out uh, protein or not I shouldn't say protein but meat such as meat like beef chicken those type things but a true vegan will eat nothing derived from animals so lacto ovo they can drink milk and eggs if they're just lacto vegetarian they can drink milk if they're ovo vegetarian they can have eggs and vegetables or to be a true vegan no meat no nothing derived from animals liquid diet a liquid diet is usually ordered for a short time due to a medical condition or before or a test or surgery it is ordered when a resident needs to help or keep the intestinal tract free of food a liquid diet consists of foods that are in a liquid state at body temperature liquid diets are usually ordered as clear or full a clear diet includes clear juices broth gelatin and popsicles when they go at room temperature they are still clear a full diet includes all the liquids on a clear diet plus cream soup milk and ice cream you cannot see through those when they melt but they are liquid when they melt so those are you either have a clear or a full liquid diet clear meaning you can look up look through them like juice broth gelatin popsicle and then your full is creamy milk or ice cream soft and mechanical soft the soft diet in, is soft in texture and consists of soft or chopped foods that are easier to chew and swallow. Foods that are hard to chew and swallow, such as raw vegetables and, vet, and fruits, are some meats, such as raw fruits and vegetables, had, oh, and some meats will be restricted. Something that's hard to chew, that's what they're not going to put on the plate. So it's going to be soft or it's going to be cut up so that it tries to be soft. Um, and the dietitian will know which ones they are. Um, doctors order this diet for residents who have trouble chewing and swallowing due to dental problems or other medical conditions. Um, a lot of times it's high fiber foods, fried foods, spicy foods. They will be eliminated from that diet. They don't want to add to the problem either. The mechanical soft diet consists of chopped or blended foods that are easier to chew and swallow. Foods are prepared with blenders, food processors, meat grinders, or cutting utensils. A lot of times they're, they're cut at this stage. Uh, unlike the soft diet, the mechanical soft does not limit spices, fat, and fiber. So the mechanical soft just means that they cut it up for them. Whereas the soft di diet, they are trying not to irritate them also. But the mechanical is just the regular foods that they've chopped up some kind of way. Pureed is a food means to blend or grind it into a thick paste of baby food consistency. That's what we're used to um, snarling our nose up at when we were trying to eat is that pureed diet but a lot of people in the nursing home have that because of their swallowing difficulties they're eating a puree diet um, the food should be thick enough to hold the form in the mouth so they will not choke on it this diet does not require a person to chew his food it pretty much just swallows a puree diet is often used for people who have trouble chewing and swallowing or something with more textured foods a lot of times they're not eating correctly so we give them a nutritional supplements uh, boost ensure glucerna for your diabetic patients but they are very rich um, milky type uh, some people even say they try to say that it tastes like a milkshake um, to each their own but it has a lot of nutrients in there and if they're not eating correctly um, they'll give them those nutritionist nutritional supplements and sometimes it's the addition on the side of their tray depends on what's going on with that patient remember that most residents should be encouraged to drink at least 64 ounces of water a day water is the essential nutrient for life not only is water essential for all the processes but it also prevents constipation prevents urinary incontinence um in that we don't want them to catch a uti or anything um what happens um without enough fluid urine becomes concentrated more concentrated urine creates a higher risk for infection Proper fluid intake also helps to dilate waste and flush out the urinary system. It may also help prevent confusion. And that's because it's preventing all the infections staying up inside the bladder. The sense of thirst can lessen as people age. So you got to remind them to drink. Um, they've got to drink. Um, so you remind them if, if you're feeding that patient, 
at the dinner table they can't pick up their own food and you're making them not making them but helping them drink at the table you need to offer off also offer them some water in their rooms because if you help them eat on the table then somebody has to help them drink throughout the day or else that's the only water they're going to get is what you're feeding them at breakfast lunch and dinner so make sure that you are offering um, more water um, the sense of thirst the lessons some residents would drink more fluids if they're offered them in smaller amounts not just one big old glass full you know smaller amounts um, sometimes they may, they may be on forced fluid that doesn't mean force fluids that means they encourage them by every time you turn around as a nurse I'll be like okay I'm not leaving until you at least drink this so I can go you know and they like okay and they'll they'll um, drink it so um, force fluids does not mean force that means encourage 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 or they may be on a restricted diet uh, depending on what the doctor set for them you'll have to measure their intake and that's another reason why you do not give up on knowing ounces to um, milliliters fluid one fluid ounce equals 30 milliliters and you don't forget that because you'll be using that throughout the whole stay for breakfast and lunch and dinner you will know that the abbreviation NPO means nothing by mouth and that's what we don't do is um, give them anything by mouth sometimes it's for a test sometimes it's because they have a uh, gastrostomy tube or maybe they can't swallow then you just don't give them anything by mouth maybe it's a cholesterol test in the morning so we don't feed or we don't eat after 12 o'clock midnight depends on what the problem is but no matter what we can do um, even if somebody is NPO you still don't you don't give them water either you don't give them nothing so whatever time they tell you not to dehydration occurs when a person does not have enough fluid in the body dehydration is a serious condition it's a major problem among the elderly people can become dehydrated if they don't do not drink enough or they have a diarrhea or they're vomiting people get dehydrated very quickly so we are going to encourage fluids for preventing dehydration report your observations and warning signs to the nurse encourage residents to drink every time you see them offer fresh water or other fluids maybe they like drinking something else try to offer offer that but you make them and get them to drink other things ice chips frozen flavored ice sticks gelatins are also liquids if you can get them to eat that i love jello um maybe that'll be encouraging also if appropriate offer sips of liquid between bites of food at the meals and snacks um that's what we do because their saliva already has dried up um i don't say dried up but it has lessened as it, they age we need to get them drinking because we don't want them choking make sure the pitcher or cup are enough or light enough what one person does okay you help them drink in the cafeteria they couldn't pick up their own cup you help them drink you picked up the cup put it to their mouth and they drink what sense would it make to put a pitcher in their room just for them to look at because we already know they can't pick a cup up are they going to pick up the pitcher so you would make them a cup hopefully or if they can't pick up that cup you get them to drink that cup um make sure you know who um you're feeding on in the cafeteria or or helping them drink because you need to do that when they get back to the unit um offer assistance if the resident cannot drink without help um, use adaptive cups and I hate to call them sippies but those are wonderful observe and report for dehydration resident drinks less than six eight ounce glasses of liquid a day we need to drink 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 resident drinks little no fluids at meals if they drink or they need help drinking from a cup if they have trouble swallowing liquids if they're frequently vomiting or having diarrhea or fever we're gonna have to let the nurse know so we can push fluids still resident is easily confused or tired a lot of times that that's that dehydration that causes UTIs it causes confusions report any dry mouth cracked lips sunken eyes dark urine strong smelling urine weight loss or complaints of abdominal pain all that can be an infection or dehydration they need fluids because that can kill you so um, make sure they get their fresh water if you look at number five um, I want you to read all that and read why you do what you do but number five use and store ice scoop ice scoop properly do not allow ice to touch your hand and fall back into the container then you just contaminated all the ice place scoop in proper receptacle at their use that avoids contamination of the ice that receptacle you need to put on the side um, 
Uh, it depends on how they label it. Sometimes they uh, clean it shift to shift, but they, there's a special place for that scooper. And it's not in the ice. You do not leave it in the ice. <clears throat> Make sure that the pitcher and the glass are light enough for the resident to lift. Leave a straw in it, especially if they have any lifting problems. Place the call light always. And that's for fresh water. Fluid overload occurs when the body cannot handle the fluid consumed. This often affects people with heart and kidney disease. A lot of times you'll see edema. That's the swelling of the extremities, of the ankles, feet, fingers, and hands. Edema is swelling caused by excess fluid in the body tissues. When you see that, something's going on. A lot of times it's the heart, kidney, heart or kidney. You'll see weight gain or decreased urine output. They'll be short of breath because they, you know, it's backing up into their lungs. They have an increased heart rate, the anxiety. Sometimes they're so swollen, their skin appears tight, smooth, or shiny. You've got to watch out for them. List ways to identify and prevent unintended weight loss. Sometimes it depends on what they have. Um, it can become a serious problem, especially if they have not much to lose. If a resident has diabetes, COPD, cancer, HIV, or other diseases, he's at a greater risk for malnutrition. We've got to watch them. Guidelines. Report observation and warning signs to the nurse. Food should look, taste, smell good. Encourage them to eat, talk about the food, sit in front of them, talk to them. Honor residents' food likes and dislikes. If they don't like ketchup, don't put ketchup on their plate or ketchup on their um, uh, meatloaf. And um, just make sure you try to appease them. Help residents who have trouble feeding themselves. Season foods to their preference. Allow time for them to eat. Tell the resident or the nurse if the residents have trouble using their utensils. Record the meal and snack intake. Every meal, you're going to have to record what, how much they ate. Um, put it in a 25 of one fourth. You can, um, you know that vegetables are 25% of the meal, right? So do approximately. If they ate half of the 25, that'll be 12.5. Um, and that's how you would uh, estimate their foods. If it's almost all gone, you know that's 90%. Um, just know that um, you're going to have to um, chart how much they ate every day on breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, give oral care before and after meals, which I don't see a lot. Give oral care before and after meals. Position the resident sitting upright for eating. What have we been focused on? That we are going to sit them at a 90 degrees for eating. If they're in their bed, maybe they can sit on the side of the bed and eat. Um, if they're laying in the bed, you have to put that tray right in front of them because that is their food, and you let them. Uh, and then you feed them from there. Um, observe and report for unattended weight loss. Resident needs help eating. If they eat less than 70% of their meals, if they have mouth pain or dentures that don't fit, any difficulty chewing and swallowing, any coughing or choking while they're eating, if they're sad, they're crying while they're trying to eat, all that will make them have uh, unintended weight loss. Plus, depression can cause people not to want to eat also. If they're confused, if they wander, if they pace, maybe they can't sit down long enough to eat. Um, you try to give them those uh, walking foods, uh, finger foods. Identify ways to promote appetites at mealtime. Mealtimes are often the times of the day that residents look forward to the most. We are, it's important for getting proper nu nourishment. There are also times for socializing, which has a positive effect on eating. Socializing can help prevent weight loss, dehydration, and malnutrition. And when they see somebody else eating, they tend to eat too. It can also prevent loneliness and boredom. Um, promoting healthy eating is a very good part of your nurse assistant's job. We're going to try to get them eating. Promoting appetites, a system with grooming. On our state test, what do we do? We're going to wash our hands before, or their hands. Our hands too, but their hands especially. Give oral care before eating. Offer a trip to the bathroom. You don't want to be trying to eat and you have to use the bathroom. Help residents wash their hands before eating. Encourage the use of dentures, eyeglasses, hearing aids. That just makes the, it more pleasant. Check the environment. The temperature should be comfortable. Address any odors. You know, if you've got this bad odor going on, you do not want to sit there and eat beside it. Um, let's take care of the odors before then. Um, do not shout or raise your voice. Do not bang plates or cups. All that can aggravate your patient and make them not want to be in there while, you know, to eat. Seat residents next to their friends or somebody they may can converse with. Properly position them at that 90 degrees angle. If they're in a wheelchair, make sure they're, um, maybe they can be resting their arms on the table. Um, most of the time, they'll have them adjustable tables that'll fit those wheelchair patients. Uh, residents who use jerry chairs, which are reclining chairs on wheels, should be upright, not recline while eating. Of course, we know that. They have to be sitting up 90 degrees. I don't care what kind of chair they're in. 
Serve food promptly to maintain the correct temperature. Keep it covered until ready to serve. Plates and trays should look appetizing. Um, if they don't, tell somebody because that's something happening in the kitchen. Give the resident the proper eating tools. Use assisted, uh, assistive utensils. And if you see in that picture, that cup, maybe that person can't um, put their head all the way back so they can just tilt the cup um, without it getting in their way. Or, or that plate guard right there that's also being used. And um, that's another one. And the spoon. If you see, maybe they can't do that scoop method with their hand. So they've got a different size kind of fork too. And there's all kind of little adaptations here. Even their hand. Maybe their hand can't close all the way. So they've up that uh, grip. So they got a thick grip to it also. Always be cheerful, positive, and helpful. Honor their request if you can. Try your best to make them happy. Demonstrate how to assist with eating. Other residents will only need help sitting up. Depends on what your residence is going on with them, what, how you assist. They may need someone to open the curtains or cartons and cut and season their food. Once that's done, they can feed themselves. Your job is to observe. Other residents will be completely unable to feed themselves. Your job is to feed them. The NA should only give assistance as specified when necessary or when residents request it. Sometimes it is, maybe they're tired for the day, and sometimes if you know they don't normally ask for help to eat, if they're asking for help to eat, number one, you should note that something's wrong, and try to help them if you can, especially if they just, um, you know them. Uh, for example, if a resident can hold and use a napkin, let them do it. If they may can't hold their spoon, they might can't do anything else, but give them that napkin so maybe they can wipe their mouth if something comes down their mouth. Just at, at least try. Um, if they can hold like finger foods, like a chicken nugget, that's a good finger food. Um, let them try to do that and try to eat that. Assist with the resident with eating. Before you begin serving or helping a resident, wash your hands. Identify that resident. Look at the meal tray. Ask them to state their name. You know you walked into the room that you're supposed to, but ask them to state their name. Well, look at that tray and make sure it says no added salt and that you don't have salt on it. Give that patient their tray. Um, make sure you sit at their eye level when you're feeding them. You don't want to stand up over them and feed them. It's just kind of weird. And also makes you not part of the eating experience. So you need to sit down with them. If the resident wishes, allow time for prayer. Never treat the resident like a child. Don't do that. Open your mouth. Here comes the train or however they do it. Here goes the airplane into the hangar. Don't do that. Uh, that's very disrespectful. Makes them feel childish. Um, don't do that. Test the temperature of the food. Do not blow on my food. And, but you can test it. Put your hand over it or under the bottom. You can test that temperature. Um, pour liquids as needed. Make sure you season up if you can. Uh, identify the foods and the fluids that are in front of the resident. Make sure you don't say you want some of this green stuff or this white stuff that they chopped up. You say, do you want some chicken or do you want some green beans? You do not say this weird looking green stuff. Um, that is part of their dignity, and plus that doesn't even sound appetizing. Uh, don't mix foods unless they want you to. Do not rush the meal. Be social. Be friendly. And, um, you know, make little comments. It smells good. Looks pretty good. How's it, how's it going for you? Give the resident your full attention. Alternate food and drink. If the resident wants a different food from what's being served, tell the kitchen. They actually have a right. They actually have a right. Remember the blue boxes? Residents rights for clothing protectors. Residents have the right to refuse to wear a clothing protector. You're supposed to ask them, do you like to use a clothing protector? We use it to actually protect their clothes and so food will get on them and you don't have to change them. But if the patient don't want it, don't put it on there. We actually do feed a resident, so we already know that. Um, know how to do that. Scale 214, page, um, page 214, look at number four. This is important. Look at the diet card or the menu. Ask the resident to state their name. Verify that the resident has received the right tray. So you go into their room. Hello, my name is Cheryl Davis. I'm your CNA today. And we're going to be feeding you. Can you tell me your name? And they tell you their name. And you say, okay. And you match it to the tray. And you know that's theirs. Identify signs and symptoms of swallowing problems. A lot of patients will have uh, dysphagia. Um, and that's why they are being helped. Or they are being observed eating. Depends on what degree they have. Uh, some people can still eat their own, but they, they have difficulty. Um, residents may have conditions such as dysphagia 
Um, a stroke or CVA can cause weakness on one side of the body and paralysis, nerve and muscle damage from the head and neck cancer, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, all may, all may be present. A lot of that stuff causes difficulty swallowing. Um, sometimes they'll eat soft foods, thick and liquids, depends on what the nurse or what the doctor has came up with. The NA should not be able to recognize and report or I said that backwards. The NAs need to be able to recognize and report signs that the resident has a swallowing problem. Some of those are coughing during the meals, choking during the meals, dribbling saliva, food or fluid from the mouth, having food residue inside the mouth or the cheeks, they'll be on the side of their mouth, gurgling during and after meals or losing their voice, that means it's stuck in the wrong place probably, eating slowly, avoiding eating, spitting out pieces of food, uh, swallowing several times per just one mouthful, but they got to keep swallowing at it. Uh, clearing the throat frequently during and after meal <clears throat> is trying to get into the wrong pipe. Watering eyes when eating or drinking. Any food or fluid coming up into the nose. Making a visual effort to swallow. They are swallowing hard. Uh, breathing rapidly, rapidly. Difficulty chewing. Difficulty swallowing. Medications will tell on them. If they can't swallow medications, um, they're probably going to evaluate them for swallowing foods. Um, and that's what they're going to check out. Residents with swallowing problems may be restricted to consuming only thickened liquids and they will not get a um, pitcher of water to their tray table or they or to their room because they all their fluids have to be thickened. If you're going to bring them something, make sure it's thickened liquid. Um, some beverages arrive already thickened and ready to drink. Other beverages must have the thickening agent added. I've seen just water with the thickening liquid in it from their medications. But they're trying to promote them. They need, still need to drink water. But they can't swallow just plain water. So we need a thickening agent. So sometimes they're nectar thick. That just means it's thicker than water. And it's like a juice. More like a pear nectar tomato juice. Not so thick, but it's thicker than water. Honey thick is just like honey. has the thickness of honey. It will pour very slowly. A resident will usually use a spoon to consume it. Or pudding thick, which this consistency, the liquids have become semi-solid, semi -solid, much like pudding. A spoon should stand up straight in the glass when the middle of the drink. Underline that. A spoon should stand up straight in the glass when put into the middle of the drink. Very important. That's how it needs to be at pudding thick. So these people can swallow properly. You got nectar thick. That's what it is. Nectar thick. It's got a little particles in it maybe like tomato juice honey thick is, is, is it pours very slowly most of the time you use a spoon uh, put in you're going to use a spoon swallowing problems for residents at high risk for choking on food or drink inhaling food fluid or farm until into the lungs is called aspiration we already know what inspiration means that's breathing in but aspiration is inhaling food fluid or farm until into the lungs underline it Guidelines for, for preventing aspiration. Position residents in a straight upward position when eating or drinking. We know that. Offer small pieces of food, small spoonfuls of your puree diet. Feed residents slowly. Do not rush them. Place food in the unaffected or stronger side of the mouth. Make sure mouth is empty before giving another bite. Keep residents in the upright position for at least 30 minutes after they've ate or drank. Well, I'd recommend two to three for heartburn or GERD. When the digestive system does not function, they may have hyperalimentation or total parental nutrition. All that is is fluids of food that goes into your vein, directly into your vein. It bypasses the digestive system. It goes right in there. Something's going on with your digestive system, so they will put food through your veins. And they call that hyperalimentation or TPN or total parental nutrition going through your veins. Sometimes... Um, a person is unable to swallow he or she may have a feed have to feed through a tube and they call that the nas nasal gastric tube so nasal meaning nose gastric meaning stomach so that's what it does it goes from your nose to your stomach um, a tube can also be placed into the stomach through the abdom abdominal wall um, for long-term use they might do that they put in a peg tube percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy all that means is per the skin it's a hole hole there that made a hole into your stomach gastrostomy the surgically created open into the stomach that allows the insertion of a tube is called a gastrostomy so they are going to put a little hole there and put the tube there conditions that may prevent swallowing include coma 
cancer, stroke, refusal to eat, extreme weakness. Sometimes we just have to get them fed how we can. NAs never insert or remove tubes. Do not do the feeding or irrigate the tubes. Underline that, that's what you don't do. Remember your scope of practice. NAs never insert or remove tubes. Do the tube feeding or irrigate the tubes. But we will make sure that we are positioning them correctly for eating. So if you have a tube feeding, how what is the position you need to keep them in? It is 45 at least. And they never, 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 this could be life or death, that lay down flat because they have that going on with their stomach. Something's going on with it. So you do not ever lay them flat. They will always be at 30 degrees when they're sleeping or whatever. But when they're eating, and, and put it on up to 45. More can be better. Can't go wrong if it's more. Make sure the tubing is not coiled or kinked or resting underneath the resident when you do go check. Um, a lot of times I've seen um, fluids just all in the bed just because something got disconnected normally from the stomach area. A doctor would prescribe the type and amount of feeding. Let them do that for you. A resident with a feeding tube should always have the head of the bed 30 degrees. And even if in a sitting position, they can only... Um, but they, they have to eat at a 45 degree angle, but they will always be at a 30 degree or more. If the resident must remain in bed for long periods of feeding, during their feedings, give skin care. Report any of these to the nurse. Any redness or drainage around the opening, skin sores, cyanide skin, resident complaints of pain, any nausea going on. Check for coughing, vomiting, diarrhea, swollen abdomen, fever, tube falls out, problems with equipment, sound of the feeding pump alarm. Change of the resident's incline position. Describe how to assist residents with special needs. Um, they may have a stroke, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, all or dementia, head trauma, blindness, or confusion. They all need some type of special assistance. So we're going to list some of them here, which are very important. Use assistive devices such as utensils with built-up handle grips, plate guards, and drinking cups. We've seen that in the other page as an example. Assist with adaptive devices for helping them... Um, or assistive or adaptive devices are for helping them eat on their own as much as they can. That's what you want to do. Any adaptive equipment that they, helps them do more for themselves is um, heaven sent. Residents may benefit from physical and verbal cues. Sometimes they don't remember what to do with things. So, okay, pick up your spoon, put some carrots on your spoon, raise the spoon to your lips, open your mouth, place the spoon in your mouth, close your mouth, take the spoon out of your mouth, chew, swallow, drink some water. That is a true someone who just can't remember how to eat, and we had to help them step by step, one step at a time. Um, uh, sometimes uh, if you put your hand over uh, someone's hand that is just shaking, um, you can help them feed their self, and it makes them feel a little more dignity because they're at least trying to feed their self, um, and that's okay too. Verbal cues must be short and clear. The cues should prompt the resident to do something. So, when you do tell them something, especially during the eating process, doesn't need to be long. Again, we, we already mentioned it. Pick up your spoon, put some carrots on your spoon, open your mouth, swallow, drink water. Those are ways to um, tell that patient how to do one step at a time. And that's anything. If it's too confusing for them, one step at a time will fix it. For visually impaired residents, use the face of an imaginary clock. And that's how we do their rooms already. When they walk into the room, it's about 6 o'clock or where they're at, and that's how you describe their foods. That tray right there, I'd probably turn it around a little so the chicken would be at 6 o'clock, potatoes at 9, peas at 12, carrots at 3, and that would be just as easy. But that is a balanced tray. But uh, they still are going to describe it as a clock. For residents who have had a stroke and have a paralyzed or weaker side, make sure you're always placing food on the unaffected side of the mouth. That's the stronger side. Make sure food is swallowed before offering another bite. Always check for that. For residents who have Parkinson's, tremors, or shaking can make it difficult to eat. Help by using physical cues. Place food and drinks close to the resident. Make sure they can reach them. If the resident has poor sitting balance, seat them in a regular dining chair with armrest. Let them rest on, on the table. However they can do, get them there so they can eat. Um, if a resident has poor neck control, a neck brace can be used. If the resident bites down on utensils, please don't pull them out of their mouth. You just sit there and let them go. They can't, they can't swallow it. They're not going to chew it up. It's just going to be sitting there aggravating them. So um, 
eventually they'll let it go. If the resident pockets foods in his cheek, ask him to chew and swallow the food. Touch, touch the side of their cheek and just push it in and let them know, hey, um, you got a little food over here. Um, get your tongue over there and get it. It's over on this side. And um, that'll be fine because they know it's weak or maybe they can't even feel on that side of their mouth. So any cues would help, especially when they're trying to do for themselves. If the resident holds food in his mouth, ask him to chew and swallow. You may need to trigger swallowing. To do this, now this is new one on me, gently press down on the tongue when taking the spoon out of the mouth. Like when you feed them, you put the spoon in their mouth, say you're feeding potatoes, and then as you bring out, you press down. Just a little bit. And that should make them want to swallow. Um, make sure that they have swallowed their foods also before you um, offer them a next bite. That's chapter 8.